before this week, I had not touched a book since the end of December, which means, yes, I basically did not read for almost a month. The book slump was beating me up. And for some of you, I know that it's tearing up your behind as well. So today we're here to actually figure out how to get out of a book slump. Let's get into it. Hi guys, welcome to my channel. If you are new, my name is Shelly. I of course love books, but you really wouldn't know that <laughs> over the last few weeks because I've not touched a book. This week has been my saving grace. I have finally been able to just immerse myself in a book and it was beautiful. But I am not the only one who gets into these slumps that basically terrifies me because I love reading, you know? It's my way of escape. It's my way to just calm down when the world is chaotic. It is one of the things that brings me joy and peace. Yet I could not, for the life of me, pick up a book and... If you are in this space right now, believe me, I sympathize with you. Like, I, believe me, I feel for you. And I don't want you to suffer any longer in the way that I was suffering. So let's get into some ways that you can get out of a book slump. Guys, this list is not exhaustive. It doesn't work for everyone, but these are tips that have worked for me and I am praying that it works out for you because if you love to read, then the worst thing is to be in a slump, okay? Now, first, before we even get into that, let's actually try to reason out why slumps occur. Now, one of the most common reasons that I think most people can relate to is after reading either an amazing book or a terrible book you simply cannot pick up another book because if it was so great you're just like you are stuck in that world you are stuck with those characters and not being able to further on in that adventure is you know it's so heartbreaking you cannot imagine going to another world that's not that world you cannot imagine hearing dialogue from characters that are not those characters that is like the terror of an amazing book because yes it's so amazing that it blew our minds but it blew our minds so much that our brain matter is scattered and we cannot pick up anything else now the other end of the spectrum is a really really terrible book where you read something that really kind of destroys your hope for literature like you just pick it up and you're just like what in the world was this this was a dumpster fire. This does not deserve to be printed. Why did a tree have to die for this? Yes, that is the other other side of the spectrum. It's either it was really good or really, really bad. That's usually, for most people, what gets them into a book slump. Now, let's really get into how to get out of it. Because those are, like, that is the main reason that someone can get into a book slump. There are definitely more reasons, but usually it's one of those two. Now, like I said, this is an exhaustive, but one of the first things that you can do to get out of a book slump is either buddy read or join a book club. Guys, I know that reading is one of those things that a lot of us do in solitude where we want to shut away the world and get into our book. Yes, but there's something about reading a book and getting to discuss it with someone who you're close to or someone who really gets it. A lot of my friends aren't readers and they don't read as much as I do or they don't read the genres that I do and so when I want to freak out about something a lot of times I don't have someone to like freak out with and it's so like disheartening sometimes you're just like did you see what he did and you're just like I really have to speak to myself and I, I already did that you can call me weird if you want to but I already did that and I don't really care and sometimes you actually want someone to scream and yell with you or you want someone to understand the pain that you're going through when a character dies or you want someone to feel the cringeness when a character does something that's just ugh cringeworthy and sometimes you don't have that so if you are buddy reading it's really something that can motivate you also with book clubs it's kind of just like guys we're reading this for the month we're reading this for the week if you're like me you're very like orderly you have your planner and seeing a check mark <laughs> motivates you <laughs> and you have that accountability with a book club as well so if you go to a book club it's kind of just like okay i have to read this because 
one, I have to go to that book club and we have to discuss it. I have to know what I'm talking about. But also in the book club, they're checking in like, hey guys, have you read Have you read a few chapters today? What did you think? You have someone like that accountability checking up on you. Like, are you actually reading? So it can really get you out of your book slump or it's, it's kind of like one of those forceful methods to get you to read. But sometimes you need a bit of force to really just get back into the groove of things. Same thing with buddy reading. Um, I had not done buddy reads before last year and I did it. And it was really, really fun. Like I said, you are motivated to read with someone. You definitely are because they started the book before me and then they got to me immediately. They're just like, oh my goodness, this book is so good. Wait till you get to this part and da 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 da. And they were so excited that I was just like, wait a minute, I need to see what they are talking about. So reading alongside someone will get you to actually get hype about a specific book. Now, if the book is bad, then they just might be like, don't read that. But then... <laughs> If anything if the book is bad you guys can like dust it together you guys can just be like it was crap like it is trash you need to read this to see how ridiculous this character is like you can bash the book together it's a bonding experience but like i said just that like community aspect of it is really one of the things that gets you motivated to read so if you're in a book club i you know i encourage you to try a book club or a buddy read and this is where community is very important there are a lot of book clubs, there are a lot of book apps that you can, um, um, book club apps that you can use to like, find a book club and get some discourse going with some random strangers. Same thing with like, Bookstagram is really good for this. I think book talk is a bit harder to find people to, you know, be a book buddy with. But on Bookstagram, it's really, it's really easier, I will say, because you will just find someone who's reading your book or who's in a comment because they someone asked a question and they will be like, oh, I read this. And then you can just be friends. I kid you not, friends have been made that way. I can I can vouch for that. As in, there will be a bookstagram who's just like, okay, guys, put in the comments what you're reading. And if someone else is reading that book, they can comment that they're reading and you guys can discuss it together. I have done that and it works. It works. So yeah, get on bookstagram, type the book that you're reading. You might find it. You're going to find a friend and get into it, okay? Get into it. The second way that you can try to get out of book slump if that doesn't work or if you're really, really too shy or you just cannot be bothered to read with people is trying a different medium. So if you normally read, um, you know, a physical book like I do, try an audiobook. I would say try an ebook, but I feel like because you're using your eyes in the same way um, as you do a physical book with an ebook, I feel like that wouldn't give you as much of a difference that you need. It wouldn't give you as much of a change as you need to really kind of get out of that book slump. Audiobooks are absolutely amazing because you really get to immerse yourself even a bit more than what you would do when you're reading a physical book. I love parallel reading. So I, a lot of times, read my books alongside audiobooks because I'm just like, okay, okay, okay. What would this character's voice sound like when I'm just normally reading? And then with an audiobook, it helps me to like visualize it better. Or sometimes it's like a voice I wouldn't expect the character to have, especially when they have multiple voices in the audiobook. Sometimes they don't, but some, you know, sometimes they do. And I'm just like, you know what, that voice is better. Or sometimes I'm just, I could have done it better, but I like it. Um, one of my favorite audiobooks is Six of Crows. Absolute masterpiece. Six of Crows, if you guys don't know, is one of my absolute favorite books like ever. The duology is one of my favorite series. I stand Cass Brecker. I am a simp for him and I will readily admit that to anyone. I do not care. I'm not ashamed. Cass Brecker forever. You know what? <laughs> no mourners. And if you know, you know. Audiobook are great to really just get you in there even more and so if you're bored with just kind of like reading a regular book then you can just say okay let me just listen to a book and for all of the people who want to come and say that audiobooks do not count as reading get off my page get off my page i'm sorry we're not here to discuss why you're wrong today you know try another day but today is not the day get off my page it's a very ableist way of thinking and i don't want to hear it today get off my page out so if you are tired of reading a physical book, go to audiobooks. And if you normally read audiobooks and you are able to, you know, read a physical book, try a physical book for once, you know, try a physical book for once. See if that change and mediums really helps you. And speaking of change, another way to get you out of that book slump is a change in scenery. I love being surrounded by my books when I read. I'm just like, 
I, it's, uh, I don't know. It's so comforting to kind of just be around my babies um, and just kind of see other characters that I've, you know, been with as I read. That sounds a bit weird, doesn't it? But eh, it's me. I love being in this comfortable safe space. I always have a, you know, a tea with me. I'm just... I'm just so comfortable here. I'll either be here, I'll be on the floor, just snuggled up in this little corner. I'll even be by on my bed and I'll just be looking at the books as I read. I'll just be like looking up at it every now and then like, oh, what a beautiful letter. <laughs> and this is my comfort space, it is. But sometimes the over familiarity might be my might be my downfall. So sometimes I go to a nice coffee shop and it really actually gets me in the mood. It's kind of just like, Oh, this is a vibe. A nice library or, you know, a park. I can't vouch for that. I've not really read in a park. I'm not, I don't, yeah, I can't vouch for that. But I've seen people reading in a park. They seem like they enjoy it. I'm sure it's fun. I personally can't vouch for it. Um, I don't like being around people and most parks are full of them. So personally, I can't vouch for that. Um, a bookstore is another alternative because you can still be surrounded by books. I love reading in bookstores. I absolutely love it because I will go to Waterstones, which is if you are, you know, in the US, Waterstones is basically our Barnes and Noble. Yeah, it's basically our version of it. Um, I love going there and seeing a book that I'm just like, oh, this book seems fun. But you know, sometimes you're just like, let me give it a try before I buy, you know, try before you buy is absolutely the greatest thing to do. And sometimes I am a bit cheeky with it. I'll try before I buy and then I'll buy and I'll stay and I'll just read it anyway. Like, and I love that Waterstones allows it. They have a cafe in the Arndale one. If you are in Manchester, then you know what I'm on about. They have a cafe where they just allow it because they know that we, we just love it. So if you are looking for change, either change your medium or change your space. If you are always reading in your room, go to the park go to a library, go to a cafe, go to a bookstore, you know? And that will also be fun because you will also kind of like meet cool people as well. Sometimes you might run away if you don't, if you're not as great with people like I am. But you know, sometimes you can make great friends. <laughs> but even if that is too much for you, leave your room and go to the living room, okay? If you're really gonna be a lot shy, leave your room leave your room and go to the living room leave the living room and come to your room like just change the scenery like it'll really kind of help you to just rejig your mind give your mind a bit of a break from what it's used to seeing and then kind of just like wake it up because sometimes your mind is just like i'm tired and so it's kind of like a trick on your mind because you're doing the same activity just in a different space but let's trick your mind just a bit and let's see if it works so that is a great way to actually try and get out of a book slump now another like thing that i think is brilliant for getting out of a book slump and this got me out of a book slump last year is trying a different genre <gasps> shelly yes yes try a different genre because sometimes it's really just your brain is dealing with too much from the genre that you are consuming normally so I, I said it before, I love me fantasy. I'm a fantasy girly. And of course I started last year just banging out the fantasies. I think I read maybe one contemporary fiction or like one prose, like one or two other genres. I just kind of threw in there randomly because the story sounded fun. But I read fantasy, 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 fantasy. That was all I read. And then not that I was tired of fantasy, but fantasy can really stress you out because there is way more possibility for heartbreak, I think, in fantasy, simply because with all the magic and battles, it's just, yeah, people are more likely to die in a fantasy book. It's just true. People aren't as likely to die in contemporary fiction. People are definitely not likely to die in romance. If anything, there is a death that preceded the beginning of the book. But in fantasy, they will kill them before the events of the book. They will kill them during the events of the book. They will kill them in the epilogue. Fantasy... No holds bar. Fantasy does not give you a chance to breathe. And sometimes that can get a lot. And so I remember at one point I said, I'm going to read middle grade fantasy. It wasn't that much, you know, of a move. It does, Yeah, so it wasn't, I don't know if mo much people will consider that a change in genre because it's still fantasy, but eh, it's a change in genre to me because middle grade fantasy, they, ke they keep it calm. They keep it calm. I'm not fighting for my life. I'm not, you know, I mean, I am, but there's, 
a lot less risk of murder you know so i love me a little middle grade fantasy and i really got into it and i really appreciate that i did because it gave me a break from the chaos of you know ya and adult fantasy and it just introduced me to a whole new world of fantasy that i absolutely love and i'm just like wow i should definitely be reading more and i, I started reading more but then even then it was still fantasy yes and at one point, like I said, all the magic and the world building, that can really just overload your brain because guys, you know, if you are a fantasy reader, you know, getting the magic system, getting the names, the, getting the language, getting all of those details in one brain. Hmm. Especially in the first book of a series. Hmm. It's a struggle. It's a struggle. It's a struggle, okay? So at one point, I got to a point where I was just like in this insane book slump. And I read like a few more fantasies that really were amazing. But then I was just like, yeah, I don't know if this helps me or hurt me. Because I am still not in the mood to really read as much as I'm used to reading. And so I switched it up completely. Like, it was a shift. And that's when I picked up my first thriller. And if you've watched all of my past videos, you know that towards the end of last year... I mostly read thrillers and I banged them out. I was reading at the pace of, you know, a crazy person sometimes. Like I read 15 books in December of last year and I believe like 13, no wait, nah, maybe like 10 were thrillers just about, maybe. But from the end of summer just about, I was just reading thrillers and I loved it so much to the point that now I'm not just a fantasy girly. I am also a thriller girly. I am in love and I'm always not just looking for new fantasies to buy and read, but I'm always looking for a new thriller. There's something new coming out. Like what, like what is this storyline? Is it going to have me clutching my chest? I love thrillers now and it really got me out of that slump because I was reading every day again. It was just, it was a whole new type of, reading it was a whole new way of thinking as well because with a fantasy book you think in a certain way you're just like okay i know that action is meant to happen i know that this is meant to happen but with thrillers my mindset had changed because now i'm in this headspace of i'm trying to figure out who's the murderer i'm trying to figure out if we're going to have another murder i'm trying to figure out what the next step is who who's tricking us who's being honest my mindset changed and so it was a new exciting journey for me so it was almost like I'm just getting into reading again. Like when you're, when you just pick up a book for like the first time as like a person who was, you know, picking it up as a hobby and not like as homework for school. It was a new thing for me. And so it got me out of that slump. And it was one of the best decisions I've made because I've now found a whole new other genre that I am enamored with. And I have no regrets. I have no regrets. If anything, I regret not reading more thrillers before. <laughs> I am definitely reading more thrillers now and I am going to make my return to just bang out the fantasies but it helped me get out of my book slump and that is absolutely absolutely amazing now this next suggestion might seem a bit wayward but hear me out hear me out watch a movie or a tv series based on a book <laughs> Sometimes we need a complete shift of medium. I know I said like, you know, try an audiobook, but sometimes we need a complete shift in medium. Sometimes we need that visual for various reasons. If you're like me, when it comes to reading and like watching series or movies based on books, you're petty, okay? I'm petty with it. As in, I will now watch it, especially if I've read the book, I'll watch it and I will go, the book was better. This didn't happen like that in the book. I don't like that. I don't think this is an accurate representation of how that character was meant to look like. Actually, I don't see it. I don't. I don't. I love doing that. That is entertaining to me. I don't know why. And I absolutely do not care. I love doing that. And I will continue to love doing that. Obviously, it's not the best doing that with people because they then hate you. But then personally, once again, I do not care. I love doing that. Now, one of the great things that you can do with this suggestion is watch a movie or, of it, or a TV series based on a book that you've not read. Because what is great about that is if you love the movie or the TV series, you're going to want to jump into the book. Because as readers, we all know that the book is better. We all know this. And so if you now watch a series or a movie, you're just like, oh my goodness, that's amazing. 
you're going to want to read the book because you know it's going to be absolutely insane in the book. You know the descriptions are, are going to be more on point. You know the characters are going to be more likable. You know you're going to get more insight on what people are thinking. You just know that the book is going to be better. And so that motivation to get into a book it will just appear out of nowhere it will materialize out of nowhere and you will be grateful yes it sounds like a bit of a wayward suggestion but believe me sometimes that's exactly what you need you'll watch it and you'll just be like oh i actually really enjoy this and then you go to the book and you're just like this was better and then you're actually back into a book and that's a perfect way for getting out of your book slump now the next suggestion for getting out of a book slump is kind of simple and i know some people don't like to do this because it can be hard but ask for a recommendation from a friend um or go online and find some recommendations just type something up why i think this was one of the easier ways for me to get out of a book slump is one thing that i suffer from that you know gets me into book slump sometimes is choice overload as you can see i i have a few books and there are quite a few off screen and um yeah so i have quite a few books and let's be real as readers we all know that we've not read all the books that we own be honest you have not and personally we don't care what does it matter if i've read it <laughs> i'm going to eventually so choice overload is definitely something that smacks me sometimes because yes for a while i'll know exactly the books that i want to read i'll have that list but sometimes you're just like okay the book i'm planning to read i actually don't want to read it anymore what do i have and then the overload of choice destroys you and you just sit here stuck because you're just like i don't know what to choose so one of the best ways to kind of get out of that type of slump is to really just tell like have someone tell you what to read you don't have to make that choice i know that some people have like the little shaky jars the recommendation jars of all the unread books that they have personally i've tried that it didn't work for me so it might work for you it didn't work for me but that might be an alternative to this method why it didn't work for me is that i took the jar i, I took out a uh, a suggestion i didn't like the suggestions i put it back in and i just kept sifting and i'm just like i don't like any of the suggestions so if you're like me and you know you're probably prone to do something silly like that then yeah the jar won't work for you so it's probably best to just have someone tell you this book is amazing and i think you'll like it you're just like okay i didn't have to choose it takes the choice completely out of your hands and the pressure of choosing a good book to read is gone and so the slump will kind of just like go away on its own. So asking for a recommendation, while it seems like a simplistic answer to getting out of a book slump and one that won't work, definitely can be your saving grace a lot of the time. So definitely try that out. Now, my very last suggestion for getting out of a book slump is what has gotten me out of my most recent book slump, the one that I just suffered from for the last month. And that is reread your favorite book or one of your favorite books. I know that with reading, we're just sometimes so caught up in like reading a new book, discovering new worlds, venturing out into the unknown, you know? It's all great and we love reading for those reasons. But in a book slump, sometimes you need a reminder of what you've experienced. You need a reminder of why you love what you love. Why do I love reading? Why do I love reading fantasies? Like for example, I, for the last few months of last year i was reading quite a lot of thrillers and it got to the point where i was feel i was like i was slumpish when it came to fantasy books i had so many fantasy books in the lineup and i'm just like oh let me pick this one up and then i picked it up and i'm just like not in the mood immediately i've gotten out of the mood and then i found a cool thriller and i'm just like yay 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 and i'm just like oh my goodness I really hope I don't fall out of love with fantasy because I do love fantasy and I knew that I love fantasy, but for some reason, I couldn't convince my brain that I love fantasy whenever I picked up a fantasy book. And so what I needed to do was remind myself why I love fantasy books. And I have quite a few favorites, but that I needed something that was cozy and wouldn't stress me out in a way that would make me dislike fantasy. <laughs> And so I picked up one of my absolute favorite series, and that is Under the Oak Tree. I'm going to put you guys on. That is a romantic Yes, yes, yes. 
romance is one of the few theories that have ma- that have made me reconsider romance and books romance and fantasy books especially under the oak tree now i know some people if you're an anime lover or a manga lover like me they're just like oh that's a webtoon no it is a webtoon yes but it started out as an actual book you can get it on kindle they have i believe 10 books now and obviously the webtoon it kind of just shows us as things are going in the book obviously gives us way more details so you're experiencing so much and obviously the webtoon is only on like i believe 90 something chapters we are on 10 books so many things if you do read under the oak tree let me tell you now if you read the webtoon the book is so far ahead so many monumental things have happened you don't understand you are going to be shocked if you if you enjoy the webtoon and you haven't read the book whoa so many things happen you're going to be shocked if you've not touched it at all read the book first read the book first then get into your webtoon because the webtoon will help you with those visuals we love to see our books come to life not in series because they mess it up a lot of the times but in a webtoon it's valid that book my comfort read so i i kid you not spent hours just rereading one of my favorite books in the series because it's a 10 book series um even though there are two new books um that i have not read in the series yet i was meant to read um book nine but then i that was when i was staring away from fantasy so i was just like uh let me just take a pause so i hadn't read it and then in that break book 10 came out and i wasn't even aware of it but then what i did instead of reading those new books in the series because i knew i still am not in a space to really one read at all and two read fantasy i said yeah i'm not gonna do that to myself i read one of my favorite books in the series and the way i spent hours hours i kid you not just in that book just reading and enjoying and smiling and giggling and just reliving the great memories that it gave me and i was just like I was so excited to continue reading. One, I'm going to continue reading that series. Yeah, if I can finish the series up to the point because I, I believe that they have more coming up. Um, but also, I'm excited to get back into fantasy because of it. I'm just like, oh my goodness, so much fun. But rereading your favorite or one of your favorite series, it just reawakens your love for your reading and you're just like oh my goodness i remember how much fun i had reading this book and i'm ready to get into either this book again or a new one and there's nothing wrong with rereading guys we don't need to just bang out books to you know get statistics out of there let's let's get let's get away from that mindset we read because we enjoy it we read because we're in love with the worlds and the characters we read because it's it's peace to us it's just amazing serenity That's why we read. So if we're rereading the same book over and over and over again, that's completely fine. And you need that sometimes, especially when you're getting out of a book slump. So I want you guys, if you are in a bad book slump or even a small book slump, to try any of these tips. Just really just go through it. Whichever one works for you, works for you. And I really do hope that one of them works for you. But believe me, I've tried and tested out these tips and they've worked out for me in various different book slumps, book slump seasons in my life as well so truly i'm excited for you to get out of your book slump that i have as well and just really enjoy yeah enjoy reading like you used to yeah so i really hope that you've enjoyed this video i hope that you get out of your book slump do let me know if you are out because i'll be so happy to know that i helped like at least one person at least uh yeah and that's just going to be so fun so until next time guys i will see you soon be sure to like comment share and if you haven't already subscribe bye guys